So the Conjuring universe just keeps chugging along. And in the three years since I have covered the franchise, there have been four movies released. Now, I know that that pales in comparison to Marvel's output, but it's a lot for, for a horror franchise. So what does the timeline look like when we last left it? When we last left the Conjuring universe, here's where we left it. The first movie chronologically was actually Annabelle Creation taking place in 43, 55, and 67. The first Annabelle movie came next in 1967 and 68, and The Conjuring occurring in 1971, with The Conjuring 2 in 1977. As I stated in my last video, my timeline contradicts the official timeline the producers put out, because theirs is wrong and mine is right, and that's just... That's just how it is. All right, with that, let the cinematic universe expand. So the next entry was 2018's The Nun, detailing the backstory of Valak, the demon from The Conjuring 2, and tells us that we're in 1952, one of the earliest points in our timeline. It kicks off with the evil making itself known, and at the Vatican, Esteban from Weeds is here, and we see a passport for Irene Palmer, who was born in 1930, making her 22 here, and it's the final girl, who is actually Vera Farmiga's younger sister. They're in Romania, and spooky stuff starts happening right away, including CGI snakes, and they get some info on Valak, and a duke had called up a demon, but they sealed the rift with the blood of Jesus, and, um, wait a minute. Is Billy Zane involved in all this? I mean, by this point in the movie, I was kind of hoping that Billy Zane was involved, because it's an hour in, and not much has happened. It turns out that World War II bombings reopened that rift, and Valak is loose again, but doesn't really show up until an hour in, and they discover that they need to reseal the gate with the blood of Christ, which... Luckily they have, because it's in this key, or, uh, sorry, uh, this thing, and then Irene gets possessed. But don't worry, she spits the blood of Jesus into the nun's face, which destroys it, mm hmm Now where have we seen that before? We see that Frenchie's been possessed, and his name is Maurice, and we jump ahead 20 years to 1972 and the beginning of The Conjuring, kicking off that movie, showing us that scam artists known as the Warrens, and wait a minute, uh, the, first, the first Conjuring movie takes place in 1971. So that title card should say uh, 19 years later, or possibly 20 years or so later, or maybe 20 years later, give or take. Next up in 2019, the series continued and maybe didn't with uh, Curse of La Llorona, which starts off all the way back in 1673, as a mother drowns her children, and then heads 300 years to 1973, so we're shortly after the events of the first Conjuring film. Velma's here, and she's a caseworker, and her current charges end up drowned in the river, and they blame Anuks and Amun. The weeping mother shows up and looks pretty much like a photo-negative version of the nun, and Father Perez shows up to tell the story of Yorona, and this would have been about five years after his encounter with the Annabelle doll, and pretty soon Anna's own kids are being targeted. A series of pretty run-of-the-mill spooky stuff happens, and Perez mentions an incident with a doll, and they show Annabelle for like a second, and they team up with a local shaman. And you know, I know that I recognize this face from somewhere. What is it? Um, he's, been, he's been in so much stuff, but there's one thing in particular that I'm... That, I'm that music, where did you hear it? Oh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, isn't that by us, thing? Oh yeah, that's it. Anna manages to take the woman's necklace, and the kids use it to temporarily distract the ghost, and they stab her with some special cross, and it kills her. So here's the deal with this one. It has Father Perez in it, and he's clearly the same guy from Annabelle. And the doll even shows up, so it's clearly a part of the series, but the director says it's not a part of the Conjuring universe, and that that stuff was just sort of an inside joke. But whatever, I mean, if you're gonna put that stuff in there, 
have James Wan produce your movie, and you're going to be the director that steps in to do the third Conjuring movie? This one's a part of the universe. Shut up. Later in 2019, we also saw the third part of the Annabelle series with Annabelle Comes Home, which starts with going back to the doll's introduction in the first Conjuring movie. And they take the doll, which is a real doll that someone would actually have made for actual children to play with. So this part is set in 1968, as we discussed in my first Conjuring Universe video. So they bring it home and put it in their little trophy room and it advances one year later. So it's 1969 now and there's a newspaper asking if the Warrens are heroes or hoaxes. I think we all know the answer to that, don't we? They leave their daughter Judy in the care of a babysitter and her jerky friend comes over who sneaks into the artifact room and sees enough curious goods for an entire season of Friday the 13th. There's a pretty big timeline discrepancy here since the music box from The Conjuring can be seen in one of the cases, but that event wouldn't happen for a few more years. I think the filmmakers just assumed that the prologue to The Conjuring took place in the same time as the rest of the film, so saying one year later would have made this set after those events, but the ending of the first Annabelle movie set those events in early 68, so the only way that it works is if The Conjuring's prologue takes a place a while before the rest of the movie. So the music box being there is an error, but it, I guess it could just be a, a similar looking haunted box. But then again, wait, 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 wait. Can we go, let's go back to that newspaper. Okay, we're gonna go back to the newspaper and take a look at this other article that says White House Secretary Ron Ziegler ties Nixon to papers. That is a reference to the Watergate scandal, which began in 1972 and spanned all the way until 1974. So, I think what the movie is trying to do here is set itself in 1972, one year after the Conjuring, not knowing the whole thing about the prologue. So basically the incorrect thing here is that title card saying one year later. It's actually four years later from the scene where they collect Annabelle. It's the only way it works. Anyway, Daniela leaves Annabelle's case open and she starts to unleash the other spirits like the bride and on TV there's a Raggedy Ann doll which by the way is what the real life Annabelle looked like not a horror movie prop. There's a big CGI dog thing, a ghost called the Ferryman, and of course Annabelle herself and even some haunted samurai suit like it's like it's blood beat or something. They end up fighting the demon inside the doll and manage to close and lock the doll case and everyone makes it out okay. And you know, if I were trapped in any horror movie franchise, like, like any of them, any of them, I would choose the Conjuring Universe because the demons in them just kind of suck at actually killing anyone. Which brings us up to current times with 2021's The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, I guess also known as The Conjuring 3, which starts with telling us that it's July of 1981 with the Warrens scamming another family. Oh, uh, sorry, I keep happening. I mean, exercising spirits from a young boy. Little David's older brother offers himself and the demon accepts and Ed has a heart attack. Spooky stuff starts happening to young Arnie, and it's just a short time later, so it's still summer of 81, and the teen boy kills his landlord. The Warrens are then called in to help his case and convince the jury that the devil made him do it, and Lorraine says, Ed and I have proven the existence of the demonic hundreds of times. You've proven it to the church. This is a court of law. The standards of evidence are completely different. As in, you know, they have some. It's September 81 and the Warrens begin investigating what led up to the possession, discovering that there's a curse involved along with Walter Bishop who has a trophy room of his own. A series of spooky spooky happens and Kastner is revealed to be the source of the curse and there's an exorcism for Arnie and the Warrens destroy the curse which stops the witch lady who placed it. He then places the totem in the trophy room along with the Valak painting and Annabelle and Arnie uh, still gets jail time and the Warrens kind of just move on to their next marks. So why give them a hard time? I mean, it's just 
It's just a movie version, right? Well, okay, the reason is this. You see, little David and Arnie had two other brothers that the movie deleted. One of those brothers, Carl, outright sued the Warrens for their books and movies about his family's case and stated that his little bro was having issues and a genuine mental disorder, but his parents, instead of seeking actual psychiatric assistance, listened to the Warrens. Carl stated that they told the family that they would be millionaires if they'd simply told people that their child was actually possessed, and also convinced the family to go with the whole demonic possession aspect of Arnie's trial, which still ended up with a real-life Arnie in jail, but gave the Warrens a book to publish. They also claimed that there were definitely ghosts in the Amityville house, a claim that later was proven to be false when that whole thing was revealed to be a hoax. They claimed that they felt actual demonic forces in the Enfield case, which was also revealed to be a hoax, a fact that they tried to justify in The Conjuring 2 by inventing the notion that the ghost forced the little girl to fake some stuff. Plus, when writing their book, in a dark place, they sought out help from a ghostwriter who went to interview the family it was based on. That writer, Ray Garten, says the family wasn't haunted, but were deeply troubled, and none of them had the same story about the haunting. But yet the Warrens told him, All of the people who come to us are crazy, so just use what you can and make the rest up. Make it up and make it scary. So that's my issue with them. They're frauds. And before someone says, well, it's, it's just a movie, just enjoy that. That's hard, because I don't want to support scam artists. Look, this is the equivalent of someone coming out with this new movie about Bernie Madoff, and this true life story about he was this big hero, and was helping people out, and this huge philanthropist, but the evil corporations brought him down by slandering his name and unfairly locking him up. I mean, we're in a time in which people don't believe actual facts and real science spoken by actual scientists and things that have scores of evidence proving them, so I guess it burns me a bit that these charlatans could just say, oh, oh you know, we, we, we feel ghosts, but, but can never, you know, uh, prove it, and everyone just lines up to buy a ticket to their new movie. Y you want to tell these stories? Fine. Change the details. Change the names, alter it enough so that it's not close enough to the Warrens' version of, quote, reality, that they get no credit and no further canonization. Make a movie about people who didn't take advantage of those in a tough spot and exploit them to enrich themselves. So there you have it, four movies that add to an already rather lengthy universe, and I have to admit that I didn't really care for any of these. Um, yeah. The Conjuring Universe is one that is pretty hit or miss, in, uh, in my opinion, and I kind of think most of them are, are miss. Uh, none of these were really that interesting or exciting, and they all kind of just felt like very generic horror films to me. But I don't know, you let me know if you think that I'm wrong down below. Uh, let me know what your comments are. Let me know if you think that the Warren family were, were good people. Um, but. Uh, yeah. Anyway, also please uh, share this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell for the updates, and check out my Patreon page um, and help support the channel like my patrons do because they are awesome people. Um, you can do that too by going to patreon.com slash movie timelines and helping out. I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.